Picture this, morning sunlight spilling across a quiet pasture, dew shimmering on blades of grass, and your horse lowering its head to graze. The sound of slow chewing, the soft sigh of contentment, it feels like the most natural thing in the world. Horses and grass, a partnership written in time itself. But then you glance back toward the barn. Stacked high against the wall sit rows of golden hay bales, tidy, clean, convenient. You start to wonder, is that really second best? Or could hay be the wiser choice? Welcome to Horse Sense, where we explore the truth behind the traditions, science made simple for horse lovers who want to care better and understand deeper. Today's question sounds simple, yet hides layers of history, chemistry, and evolution. Which is better for your horse, hay or fresh grass? It's a debate as old as the stable itself. To find the answer, we have to look beyond appearances because every flake of hay and every blade of grass carries a story. Of sunlight and soil, of preservation and change, of how horses evolved and how humans adapted. Let's begin where it all started with the living miracle under your horse's hooves. Fresh grass is nature's masterpiece. Each blade is alive with energy made from sunlight, air, and water. Through photosynthesis, the plant captures light and turns it into carbohydrates, sugars that feed both the grass and the creatures that graze upon it. For horses, grass is more than food. It's a perfect balance of hydration, fiber, and nutrients. About 70 to 80% of every mouthful is water, which helps the digestive system run smoothly. That moisture, combined with long fiber, keeps the gut active, prevents colic, and supports the microbes that live inside the hindgut, the hidden workers that turn fiber into energy. The nutrients in grass are vibrant and living. It's rich in vitamins A, E, and K, as well as antioxidants and omegaminous 3 fatty acids that reduce inflammation and promote shiny coats and strong muscles. Horses that graze regularly often show calmer behavior, healthier hooves, and better digestion because their bodies are doing what they were designed to do, eat small amounts almost constantly. But grass isn't always predictable. Its sugar levels, called non-structural carbohydrates or NSCS, change throughout the day. On cool, sunny days, grass stores more sugar. At night, if the temperature drops, that sugar stays trapped in the leaves. So early morning grazing can sometimes be risky, especially for horses with insulin resistance or a history of laminitis. Grass also changes with the season, the soil, and the weather. Spring brings rich, lush growth full of energy, while late summer grasses are tougher and higher in fiber. Soil quality affects mineral content. A horse grazing on poor soil may miss essential elements like selenium or copper, even if the field looks green and healthy. And yet, when it's right, nothing beats it. The act of grazing itself is therapy. It fulfills the horse's natural need to move, explore, and eat slowly. It supports mental peace, reduces boredom, and encourages social interaction. But nature's perfection comes with limits. Too much lush grass can be as harmful as too little. That's when humans learn to preserve it, to transform summer's bounty into something that lasts through the winter. That's where hay enters the story. Hay is grass captured in time, a moment of summer preserved for when the world turns cold. The process seems simple, cut, dry, and bale, but each step is a delicate dance between biology and timing. When grass is cut, it's still alive for a short while. Enzymes keep working, sugars burn, and vitamins begin to fade. Farmers rush to dry the forage before it molds, reducing moisture from around 80% down to 15. Done right, the result is stable, nutritious hay. Done wrong, it can become dusty, moldy, or even dangerously hot inside the bale. Drying changes the chemistry. Vitamin C disappears almost entirely, and vitamins A and E slowly decline. Yet hay gains stability and safety. The fiber becomes more concentrated, 
and the energy content can be measured and managed precisely. That's hay's greatest advantage, consistency. Unlike pasture, hay can be tested in a lab, letting owners know exactly how much protein, fiber, and minerals it provides. You can balance a diet, ration feed, and supplement intelligently. In modern stables, that reliability is priceless. Not all hay is created equal. Early cut hay is softer, greener, and richer in protein, perfect for hardworking or underweight horses. Late cut hay is coarser and lower in calories, ideal for easy keepers or ponies. Even the type of grass matters. Timothy, orchard, Bermuda, or alfalfa each bring unique nutrient profiles. But storage is just as important as harvest. Poorly stored hay can absorb moisture and grow mold, producing spores that irritate lungs and trigger coughing or heaves. Steaming hay can reduce those spores and make it safer without stripping nutrients. Hay's dry nature also means horses need constant access to water. What grass provides naturally, hay does not. That's why hydration and salt intake become more critical when pasture is replaced by dry forage. In essence, hay is dependable, transportable, and safe, the guardian of equine nutrition through the harsh months. But even this golden feed has its invisible challenges. Sugars, minerals, and environmental factors that can quietly shift its value. Every handful of feed holds secrets. Sugar, minerals, mold, these small details can make all the difference between health and harm. Sugar, or NSC, is the first hidden factor. In hay, sugar levels depend on when it was cut and how it was cured. In grass, they depend on sunlight, stress, and temperature. Too much sugar can tip sensitive horses into metabolic trouble. That's why soaking hay for 30 to 60 minutes can lower sugars by up to a third, a simple trick for laminitis-prone horses. Next come the minerals. Every region has its own soil signature. Some pastures are rich in iron but poor in copper and zinc. Others lack selenium or iodine. These imbalances don't always show immediately. But over months, they can cause dull coats, brittle hooves, or weak immunity. Hay reflects the soil it grew from, which means even the best-looking bale might miss something your horse needs. Testing and supplementation turn guesswork into confidence. Then there's mold, the quiet enemy. Even a small patch of spoiled hay can carry millions of spores. Horses breathe deeply as they eat, pulling dust and microbes straight into their lungs. Once inhaled, those spores can cause coughing, inflammation, or long-term respiratory conditions. If hay smells musty or feels warm inside, it's not worth the risk. Weather and climate matter too. In humid regions, hay storage becomes an art form. Too wet and it spoils. Too dry and nutrients crumble away. In cold regions, hay is a lifeline. In tropical ones, it's sometimes a safer alternative to overly lush, sugar-rich grass. And let's not forget parasites. Fresh pastures can host larvae and eggs that recycle through manure, while hay, being dried and stored, breaks that cycle completely. Rotating pastures, cleaning manure, and resting fields can help keep both forage and horses healthy. Each of these hidden factors reminds us, feeding isn't a static choice. It's a living relationship with nature, one that rewards awareness, observation, and care. Theory means little without real horses, so let's see how it all plays out. For performance horses, the athlete's hay offers stability. Their diets need precision, and hay's consistency helps manage calories and fiber intake. But fresh grass, when available, gives natural vitamin E and omega-3s that enhance muscle recovery and reduce inflammation. The best approach, combine both. Structured hay feeding for control and limited grazing for mental and physical well-being. For easy keepers or ponies, the equation flips. Too much lush grass can lead to obesity and laminitis. These horses thrive on mature, lower-calorie hay fed through slow feeders. 
Grazing muzzles or short turnout times keep them safe while satisfying their instinct to roam and chew. Senior horses need softness and digestibility. As teeth wear down, coarse hay becomes difficult to chew. Fresh grass, moist and tender, is ideal in season. In winter, soaked hay cubes or chopped forage replicate that texture, keeping older horses nourished and comfortable. Broodmares and foals, on the other hand, need richer feed. Early cut hay or legume blends like alfalfa support growth and lactation. Access to safe pasture adds valuable vitamins and helps foals learn natural grazing behavior early on. And for the everyday companion, the trail horse, the backyard friend, the quiet soul who waits at the gate, variety is the secret. A mix of hay and pasture mirrors the balance of nature. Movement, grazing, rest, and routine all are pieces of one whole. Across the world, climates shape feeding habits. In cold countries, hay rules half the year. In the tropics, grass is abundant, but careful management prevents overload. Each stable finds its rhythm, guided by local reality and the horse's individual needs. The key is observation. No one diet suits all. The best feed is the one that keeps your horse bright-eyed, healthy-coated, and content. So after all this science, what's the verdict? The truth is simple. Both hay and grass are essential, each serving where the other falls short. Grass is the original, rich in life, moisture, and movement. Hay is the preserver, steady, safe, and timeless. One feeds the soul, the other sustains the body through scarcity. Fresh pasture brings natural hydration, living vitamins, and joy, but it demands vigilance. Monitor sugar levels, manage grazing time, and respect the seasons. Hay offers reliability and control, but it loses the living vitality of fresh forage. Supplement wisely, choose quality, and ensure water and minerals are always available. The perfect diet isn't found in a bag or bale, it's built from understanding. From testing, watching, and adapting. From seeing your horse as an individual, not a formula. When you balance hay and grass thoughtfully, you give your horse not just nutrition, but connection, a diet that honors both nature and care. At the end of the day, horses remind us of something larger than feeding charts and lab reports. They remind us of balance, of how nature works best when we listen instead of control. Fresh grass teaches abundance, the art of change, the rhythm of growth. Hay teaches patience, the wisdom of preparation, the strength of endurance. Together, they reflect the same truth. Care isn't about choosing sides, but about understanding the whole. Every time you feed your horse, you're doing more than giving food. You're participating in an ancient relationship, one built on trust, awareness, and respect. The horse gives us its honesty, its strength, its quiet presence. The least we can give in return is mindfulness. So next time you toss hay into a net or open the gate to the pasture, pause for a moment. Feel the connection between you, the earth, and the animal before you. Remember that every choice, hay or grass, carries weight. And that true horsemanship begins not with control, but with curiosity. That's what horse sense is all about. Learning, questioning, and sharing the real truth about horses. Science and heart side by side. If this story inspired you, subscribe to Horse Sense and join a community of people who care, who believe that knowledge and kindness can shape a better world for horses. Share what you've learned, spark conversations, and help spread awareness. Because the more we understand, the more we can give back. To the horses, to the land, and to the quiet wisdom that lives between them both.